Hi everybody, so we're going to continue on with talking about the digestive system histology and in another video I actually covered the mucosa or the mucous membrane of the digestive system. In this video we're going to be talking about the submucosa, the muscularis externa, and the serosa which is the bottom most layer. So if we look at this, um, first thing let's review the mucosa, okay? So this is what the mucosa would look like if it was in the oral cavity which is the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, or the anus, okay? So up here, if you notice, we have all this. We have many layers of this, which is called stratified. If you notice, these are kind of flat cells. They're actually flat, flatter than this, but so you can see them, I actually drew them like this. That's called squamous. Flat cells are squamous. And then this is epithelium, which basically your skin cells are also epithelium. Over here, you'll notice we only have one layer of cells, and this is called simple. If you notice, they're kind of tall, they're rectangular shape, like a rectangle on its side like a column, so we call this simple columnar epithelium. Underneath this, we have connective tissue. And what this connective tissue does is it connects the top layer to what's underneath. So it's gonna connect the top layer to the bottom. We call where you see the orange here, that's called the lamina propria. And then on the bottom where this brown is, we call that the muscularis mucosae. Now what the muscularis mucosae does is it actually can contract a little bit and cause these folds that you see in here and um, in the small intestine. So, but let's talk about the other parts of this now. The submucosa obviously is under the mucosa. So these three layers again were the mucosa. So we're gonna have the submucosa. So if I were to draw this, I'm gonna draw my submucosa. Let me just move this over a little bit. We're gonna draw the submucosa right here. Okay, and this will be my submucosa. Now, I'm gonna erase this right here. And in the submucosa, I am going to have blood vessels. So we have blood vessels. Okay, so let's just draw some blood vessels in here. And I'm just gonna draw it like this, a few here, a few there. All right, and then more blood vessels okay and then we're going to have some nerves now these nerves are going to be called called the submucosal plexus so I have nerves and the nerves are called the sub mucosal plexus okay actually I'm going to put plexus down here because I'm going to be writing right there in just a minute So this is going to be my submucosal plexus. Now, what this is going to be responsible for is some of this. There's my nerves. I know it's almost the same color as my lamina propria, but these nerves will actually help control these glands. Which, speaking of glands, down here in the submucosa, I'm going to have the submucosal glands. So if we go like this, and I'm just going to draw an opening here. And I'm just gonna draw one submucosal gland, okay? And submucosal glands also secrete mucus, just like your, your mucus glands here. Okay, and like I said, these are going to secrete mucus okay so let's go ahead and draw this over here so now I'm just gonna move my camera over here just a little bit and once again it be this area that's basically down in here all right actually it'll go something like this Okay, and then let's draw our blood vessels in here. All right, and let's draw our nerves in here. And let's go ahead and draw a mucus gland. Let's just put two of them in here. And here's my submucosal glands, okay? 
It'll be right there and right there. Now, that's going to be it for the subcoastal layer, okay? Let's take a look at what's after this now. Just like here, we had the muscularis mucosae. Down here, or down under here, we are going to have the muscularis externa, which is going to be another layer of muscles. So let's go ahead and just move this back over here. going to put this like a layer here. Now the way this layer is going to look is we are going to have what we call the longitudinal muscle which is going to be a long round tube like muscle. Then we're going to have some nerves which we call the myenteric plexus and then under, then on the innermost part of this we would actually have the circular muscle. Okay so remember you're looking at this as a two-dimensional object so I'm going to draw this as my longitudinal muscle right here. Okay. And then I'm going to put my circular muscle right in here. Let's put some lines in there. This should be my circular muscle. And then because my longitudinal muscle basically surrounds this whole thing, I would also have it down in here. Okay. And then my myenteric plexus would be where you see this orange again. That would be my myenteric plexus. So let's take, let's do the same thing over here. Go down like this. Let me just erase. Okay, so now I'm going to have my longitudinal muscle, which again, this is going to be actually surrounding my circular muscle. And okay. And then my circular muscle would be in here. And what these do is they're basically going to help propel food along, they're going to help with parasolsis and segmentation, okay. Oop, one last thing, let me put my myenteric plexus would be right in here and right in here. Okay, so now if I were to draw this, okay, I'm gonna have my circular muscle would be something like this and remember it's going to be a long tube so you're looking down into it then I would have my myenteric plexus and then outside of that I am now going to have my longitudinal muscle okay so again, this, would, this picture here would be as if I took this tube out like this and then was showing it to you like that, okay? So on the inside, I have my circular muscle. <clears throat> then I would have my myenteric plexus. And then my my longitudinal muscle, okay? So once again, in the muscularis externa, I have my longitudinal muscle. which would be up here and also down here. I have my myenteric plexus, which are nerves, right? And that's gonna be right, up, oh, up, oh, sorry. It's gonna be right there, but you can also see it's down here also. Okay, you also see it's down there. And then I'm gonna have my circular muscle, 
which is going to be right there. And again, these are going to do peristalsis and segmentation. Okay, so that's the muscularis externa there. All right, now <clears throat> there's two different things that are going to happen here for the next layer. We're going to call this the serosa. And so what's going to happen here is I am going to have some loose connective tissue that's going to be right here. Okay, this is called loose connective tissue. Just like we had loose connective tissue here, we call that the lamina propria. We have loose connective tissue here. So this is my loose connective tissue. And then on top of that, we are gonna have one layer of simple squamous epithelium. And if you recall, we said simple means it's one layer. Squamous means it's flat. So I have one layer of flat cells. Now, these simple squamous epithelium also produce a fluid. All right, so this is going to be the fluid it produces. And the reason it produces a fluid is it decreases friction. These two together, right, my loose connective tissue and this here, oh, which was, by the way, we call this the mesothelium. Okay. These two together are going to be my serosa, also known as the visceral peritoneum. So I'm just going to erase this right here. And we are going to have my visceral peritoneum. Okay, so this is all my visceral peritoneum right here. It's the loose connective tissue with the mesothelium. The mesothelium actually produces a fluid that is going to decrease friction, okay? We also call this the serosa. Now on the other side, you're gonna have a parietal peritoneum which basically does the same thing. But let's take a look back over here. Because if we come back over here now, instead of having loose connective tissue and a mesothelium, what's going to happen here is I am going to have a layer of collagen. Okay, so we have a layer of collagen right here. Okay. And basically what's going to happen is this collagen is going to connect the, this structure here just to surrounding organs, okay? So in this case, we're gonna call this the adventitia. Okay, so it's basically collagen that connects, and I didn't say which part, it's going to connect basically the mouth or the oral cavity, the throat or the pharynx, the esophagus or the rectum to surrounding structures, okay? So when it's collagen connecting those structures, the mouth, the rectum, the pharynx, and the oral cavity to surrounding structures, we call it adventitia. When it's the other part of the digestive tract, we're gonna call that the visceral peritoneum. So, just to review, what we have is in the submucosa, we're going to have blood vessels, we're going to have the submucosal plexus, which is uh, nerves, and we're going to have submucosal glands, which secrete mucus. Underneath that, we're going to have the muscularis externa, which is made up of the longitudinal muscle, which is like a tube. It's, a lo it's long muscles, but it's like a tube that's going to surround our circular muscles, okay? Between the longitudinal muscle and the circular muscle, we have the myenteric plexus. And then, like I said, on the inside, we have the circular muscle. After that, 
We have adventitia, if it's the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, or the rectum. And if it's in the small intestine, we are going to have the visceral peritoneum, okay? And in the visceral peritoneum, it's made up of the mesothelium. The mesothelium is made up of simple squamous epithelium, meaning one layer of flat cells that secrete a fluid and loose connective tissue. So the loose connective tissue and the mesothelium make up the visceral peritoneum. And that's basically the histology for the digestive system. Thank you so much for watching.